What happens after that is that the sea stopped and became calm. They took Jonah and they cast the water into the sea and it ceased. That ought to put you in the mind. I would love to go back into the, into the New Testament when Jesus stood up, spoke to the winds of the storm, said, peace, be still. And here, and here when they saw that the, that the sea became calm, they saw it stopped its raging. When they finally see that finally God had answered them, these men feared the Lord exceedingly. And they began to offer sacrifices unto the Lord. Repentance is always a submission unto the will of God. And when you submit unto the will of God and follow what he has called for you to do, yes. that storm yes. will cease yes. because God is faithful. Yes. His grace is so relentless. Yes. The purpose of the storm is that you might return back unto him. Yeah, yeah. And you see that they began to offer sacrifices unto the Lord. Not unto their God, but now unto the Lord. Yeah. And regardless if this, is, if this is a picture of them being saved, the text does not tell us this. We don't have any more story on that. But what we do know is that they repented, submitted to his will, and began to offer sacrifices unto the Lord. Yeah. Repentance is doing just that. Submitting unto the Lord. And so now, how does that reflect to us today? What sacrifices do we offer up now unto the Lord? But when you read Romans chapter 12, it's laid out clearly for you. The sacrifices that we make today, Paul said, I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living and holy sacrifice acceptable unto God, which is your spiritual service of worship. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you might prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect to God. That is what we offer unto God today. Full submission unto his will. That is the sacrifice that we must give. Let us not become busy and caught up in the hustle and bustle of church life. Let us not get caught up in doing all these other things that the world believes and commands that the church ought to be doing. But let us be about doing what the will of God is. Let us not find ourselves in rebellion because we don't got so caught up in life. As a matter of fact, this, this, as we go to a close, this reminds me of a story of a family who, were, who got caught up in the hustle and bustle of life. But their son recognized that mama and daddy wasn't paying any attention to me. And just like any and every other child, when a child feels unloved and you're not paying attention, they begin to act out. So this particular boy began to act out. And his father looked at him and said, son, stop acting out. Yeah. As a matter of fact, he told the son, go over and stand in the corner until you know how to behave. And that little boy, he stumped his feet and began to pout and walk to the corner. And he shouted out unto his parents, I'm going to run away. <laughs> but here's what happened. His mother heard what he had said. His mother, because of her upbringing, she remembered the tone of his voice because it is what she spoke with when she wanted to run away from her parents. She remembered being unloved. She remembered not getting any attention from her parents. She knew exactly how her son now felt. And so she told her son, she said, okay, son, you want to run away? That's fine. You go ahead and run away. As a matter of fact, I'll begin to pack your bags for you. And the, and the son began to say, mom, hold up. Wait a minute. But she said, you do want to run away, right? Here, here's the bag. It's already packed. And now I've got this other bag here, too. Here are two bags for you. And he realized that, mom, what are you doing? I see that bag belongs to me, but that bag belongs to you. Mom, what is going on? And she said, you still want to run away, right? He said, yes, I still want to run away. Yes, I do. 
And the mother said that if you are going to run away, then I am going to run away with you because I love you too much to let you go on your own. I hear you saying that you feel unloved. So I am going to stop all that I'm going to do, all that I've been doing. I'm going to focus on you. And if you're going to run away, I'm going to run away with you. I will not let you go alone. Beloved, that's what is happening in our text. You see, in our text, God relentless grace first loved the Ninevites so much that he's going to do whatever it takes that he gets his prophet's attention yeah. that his prophet yeah. might go and tell them yeah. the message of grace and the message of hope. Yeah. God is saying, I will do whatever it takes yeah. 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 to grab a hold of those whom I love. Yeah. And even with the sailors, he said, I love you as well. My Lord, my Trust Lord. me. Yes. Submit to my will. And I will save you. And then you look at this prophet who rebelled. He said to him, my love is much greater than even your rebellion. My Lord, my and if you turn to me, yes. I will forgive you. But love, get the message here. Get the message. Sometimes we too often get caught up, caught up on the rebellion of the prophet. How about we get caught up on, on, on the person who did not rebel? How about we get caught up in the one who God commissioned to come to this earth, but he did not rebel? How about we get caught up in the son of God who never sinned against the father's command? How about we get caught up in him who did not rebel when he was supposed to come and live for those 33 years here on this earth and he did not sin and never rebel against his father's request. Why don't we get caught up upon him who did rebel and said, I have come to do the will of my father. I came to seek and save the law. I came to proclaim to a dying world the relentless grace of God and each and every person who will turn and repent. He says, I will save. Why don't we get focused on who? Him who did not rebel. Even as they beat him. Even as they marched him up on Calvary's hill. He still did not rebel. And even when they got up on Calvary's hill. And they laid him down on that old rugged cross. He did not rebel. He did not rebel. That was God that sent him to do. And even at that point. They lifted him up on the cross. And he said. I can call a legion of angels to deliver me off this cross. But that will be rebellion against the will of God. I came to die for your sin. And he told them that if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto myself. He did not repair. Let us be focused on the Son of God who died on Calvary's cross. That our sins might be forgiven and that we might be reconciled it's a right relationship yes. with God. Thank God Jesus yes. didn't rebel. Let's get caught up on Jesus. Let's get caught up on what the will of God is. Stand to your feet and go to the church.